He's going to unmute us so we can get it on the record. Mia will call it to order. <laughs> Are you there? I hereby call the zoning board of, Riverside Board of Zoning Appeals in order. Can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Childers? Here. Mr. Poltz? Mr. Richardson? Here. Mr. Schneider? Here. Mr. Timbrook? Here. I'll entertain a motion to excuse Mr. Poltz. He has COVID. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's good. <laughs> I guess the next thing is the election of the chair and co chair or vice chair. Chuck I know chairman. Yeah. Second. Okay. So All right. Roll call, We're going to do the vice chair or are we doing? We'll always do one at a time. Tim and Mr. Richardson. So you're closing nominations now? Closing nominations. Okay. Okay. Close okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Timbrook? Yes. Oh, wait. You didn't even motion. It was Mr. Schneider. That's true. I just wrote the wrong one. I was so thrown. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Childers? Yeah, abstain. Abstain. And Mr. Timbrook? Yes. Sorry. Now, uh, nominations for the vice chair? I nominate uh, Reese Timbrook. We will need a second. So, roll call, please. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Childers? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Timbrook? Abstain. Okay. All right, has everyone had a chance to look over the minutes of November 16th? Yes. Yes. Has it been that long? Wow. That long? It has. Any changes or corrections? No, no changes. Or no edits suggested. Yeah. And then a motion to approve the minutes is written. Motion to approve the minutes is written. Second. Roll call. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Childers? Yes. Mr. Timmerk? Yes. Okay. Now, our first case is the whole thing here. It's case number 21 0029, um, 231 Duffy Court. And um, Mrs. Holt will explain to us why we're still in 21 on that number. These cases came in at the very end of December, so they still got that 2021 case number. Arm. And the machine does it, we can't change it. Right? That is right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They generate those numbers for us. Well, so you want to tell us what that's all about? This is BZA case 210029 at 231 Duffy Court. The request is a variance from section 1107.5B to allow an encroachment into the required side yard setback. The requirement is five feet. The request is for five feet. So this is a 100% encroachment. A little bit about this case in the background. It is located on the Southwest corner of Duffy Court and Chesterfield Circle. The applicant has constructed a 96 square foot shed on the South side of their property. It is 11.5 feet tall and it is in the technical side yard, even though it's in the rear of the property. This is the zoning map. It is in the R3 medium density zoning district. The subject site is outlined in blue. Here is the aerial map. Again, the subject site is outlined in blue. And this is where the shed is. This is an old shed that was there and it's being um, rebuilt. See that again? This is, there was an old shed there. Yeah. It's a, it was the old shed? Mm hmm And they rebuilt it? Yes. Okay. So here is the site plan that the applicant submitted. Here's the front of the subject site. This is adjacent property to the north, adjacent property to the south. So this is the property that abuts against the, the shed. Here is the variance area where the shed is going. And you can kind of see the old shed. 
So which shed is it? This is the new shed. Oh, okay. So it's still there until this one's completed. That's a big shed. It's tall. Here's another view of the shed. Sorry about the lighting. <laughs> but it is right on the property line. And here is a view from Chesterfield. Now moving on to the standards for approval. The first one is whether the property in question will yield a reasonable turn or whether there could be any beneficial use of the property without the variance. Staff finds that the answer to this standard is yes, the property can still be able to use a reasonable return. Um, the shed does offer some needed storage on the site since there isn't a garage, but it could be relocated to that side yard, other side yard that's on Duffy. Number two, whether the variance is substantial. The answer is yes, this is 100% encroachment into the side yard. Standard three, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be altered or whether adjoining properties would suffer a detriment as a result of the variance. Uh, staff finds this would be impact the adjoining property owners since it is so close to the property line, the applicant or any future property owners would need to go to the adjoining property to maintain the structure. Standard number four, whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of government services, no to this standard. Standard number five, whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restrictions. The applicant purchased prop this property prior to the current zoning regulations. Number six, whether the property owner's predicament can be alleviated through some other method. Yes, the shed can be relocated into the rear yard or into another portion of the property out of any of the existing easements on the northwest side of the property. And then the final standard for approval, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning require would be observed, staff finds that it would not. One of the reasons for the setback requirement is to ensure that property owners can maintain the structures on their property without encroaching on their neighbor's land. So this variance would, as staff said earlier, would adversely affect the adjoining property owner because of the construction and maintenance of the shed to go onto their property <laughs> is an issue. <coughs> staff finds that the requested variance for a side yard encroachment is not adequately justified and does not meet the standards for approval, staff recommends denial of the variance. These are your required actions to either approve or deny the variance based on any testimony or evidence you hear today, with information in the staff report, and of course the standards within the Unified Development Ordinance of the City of Riverside. And just to remind you of what the request is, a five foot um, variance. Are there any questions for staff? I have a question for you, but it may be for the property owner. So I'll ask you, and if it is, defer it. Um, you mentioned that the new shed was going to replace the old shed. So are they looking at when they tear down and move the old shed, are they re relocating that onto the pad or the area of the current one, or it's just going to be in the same place and they tear down the other one? It is, uh, the property owner can clarify this, but okay. from my discussions with them, they were going to tear down the old shed once the new one was constructed and would be in the place that you see it in the pictures. Yes. How much footage is between the shed wall and the uh, fence right next to it? Is the fence right on the property line? Yes, it is. The fence is right on the property okay. line. Okay. So what's the distance between the two? I don't know right off. Okay. So we'll ask. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one question. So just a clarification. So this this lot has side yards and has side yard and front yard. It doesn't have a backyard, right? So how our code would go back and Sorry. show you. Okay. So based on our code, this would be the only rear yard that they have. Okay. Thank you. You always have questions for the city. Okay. Is there anyone here would like to speak in favor of the application? Is there a Richard? 
Which case is this one? That's the second case. Oh, that's the second one. They're both for the second. Yes. We don't have anybody for the first. I do not see the property owner here. There's that's Mr. Property. Hayes. What? Robert Hayes is his name. Well, he, no one here in favor of. He didn't care enough to be here. Okay. All right. Well, I guess then it's up to us. Well, there could be somebody here. Against. Is there anyone here like to speak? Is there anyone else? No one in for it. Is there anyone here like to speak against the pop? Well, you got to swear in, sir. There's, there's a, everything here is. <laughs> All right. So you don't want to say anything. All right. Is there anyone else here like to speak against this? No. Okay. All right. I guess now it's up to us. Now we close the public portion of the hearing. So what do you guys? My my opinion is is that with a property so close to that line right there, it, it just creates a real possibility there's gonna be conflict between neighbors forever. Be really hard to do any kind of maintenance. And I had a I had a shed like that once and it does require maintenance, you know, whether it's painting or staining or anything else. I can't even imagine trying to do that with a fence between me and, and standing the other guy's property. Hmm. Um, well, that's why I had the question, what's the distance between the siding and the fence? Well, you still got to stand on his property to get in there. Yeah. Well, you don't. Huh? Not necessarily. You could rappel down from the top. Well, that's, <laughs> there's usually you space. There's usually space in between. I mean, I mean technically. I just can't I tell. There you can see. There you can see. It was, I, I simply can't tell from the uh, photographs and the description, even though they've asked for a 100% encroachment. There's a picture, Kim. You can see the edge. I think it's, it's right. It's right on it. It's right on. It's, it's right on it. It's but right on. What's the clearance? Is it a foot? Is it four feet? Is it three feet? You know, I, I don't, don't know. have a survey to tell you exactly where that property line. Is. Okay, that's because. Even if you stain, I have vinyl siding on mine, so I don't have to do that kind of nonsense. But I know lots of people have to stain it and paint it and do that all the time. And that's why I'm asking, hey, you know, how much space they have and, and maybe the reasons why or why they put it where they did. Well, unfortunately, they're not here to speak. Yeah, can't Can help them there. One more. I guess let's go back again. There was one that I wanted to. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I'd love about. to hear what they have to say. Right there, but so right there, I'm assuming that we are looking at from the side of the street that <clears throat> technically right now the old shed is between the fence and the new shed that we don't even see. Yeah. Correct. It almost looks like that's the top of the roof near the uh, near the house. Yeah. So not only is it sitting on the fence, which would the old one was grandfathered in, now you're building a new structure. But the eyesore of it sticking so far up against, right against the neighbor's fence, right. is is one of my concerns. And then, it, I guess the easy thing to me, the reason I was asking the question is, it's a shed. Move it. Right. I mean, I mean that, that's the. I mean, th those sheds. They if mm -hmm. they're not assembled there, they bring them in and set them down where you want on right. a foundation. You know, whether or it's on the ground, or or it's on yeah. the blocks, concrete pad, or whatever. It's just it would be. Well, just, a lot of those don't even have a foundation. They can. They don't have mm -hmm. a, they just they're on plywood floor. In it. Well, they have these two by four or whatever size those things are that they ride on treated wood and they can slide them. Yeah. Yep. And, and I said that, I mean, they do have, a, it's not very big, but they have a backyard area. I mean, yeah. they could move it. So they could easily move it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's right on the property line. It's much taller than the other one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how we could okay that. If I were the neighbor next to him, I wouldn't really care for that. I'd be in here talking. Yeah, to me so. too. <laughs> Oh, it's too tall, it's so tall, and then so close. Okay, agreed. It's almost like a barn. Yeah. So, the, any other comments? Yeah. Everyone, uh, I just wish the owner was here to give us their side. Yeah, so I can't help. Wish that. the neighbor was here. Yeah, all right. So, I guess we're ready to make a ruling. All right. <clears throat> We find that Riverside zoning ordinance was passed the law after rigorous procedure was followed, and therefore we begin our inquiry with a presumption that the law should be upheld without a variance, and the burden is on the appellant to show by convincing evidence that the code should be varied, regardless of how large or how small the requested variance may be. We find that the property in question would yield 
a reasonable return and there can be an eventual use of beneficial use of the property without the variance by relocating the shed. Uh, and with the shed so close to the fence, there's a chance that granting the variance could reduce the value of the property due to the nearly impossible way to maintain the shed. We find that the appellant's uh, applicant is requesting a 100% encroachment, which is substantial. The variance, if granted, would, will cause the adjoining property owner to suffer substantial detriment to the close proximity to the property line. The applicant or, and or really, future property owners of the subject site will need access to the adjoining, adjoining property to maintain the structure. This could lead to problems with future owners on both sides of the fence. We find the owner's predicament could be obviated by moving the shed to an area out, out of the existing setback. We find the spirit and intent be a, behind the zone orders would not be observed by granting the variance. One of the reasons for the setback requirements is to ensure the property owner can maintain the structures on the property without encroaching on the neighbor's land. The variance would adversely affect the adjacent property owner because the construction and maintenance of the structure will require access to the neighboring property. We also take into consideration the city zoning staff does recommend denying the variance as requested. We find the appellant has not met the burden of showing practical difficulties exist for a setback variance on, for the shed. Therefore, I make a motion the variance be denied as requested. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Childers? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Timbrook? Yes. Okay. So it is final sign. It's on there because it says so here. On the, uh, so final takes far less maintenance. But if that some, comes up, it does take some. Up. It takes some. Yeah. Yeah. You got to hose it off every once in a while. <laughs> well, not only that, one of the big storms could happen. Then. Yeah. And they could take it off. Take the vinyl In off. case the applicant asks. And the next well, it's made of vinyl, but okay, well, still, <laughs> it requires some maintenance. What are you saying, Shutter? <laughs> We'd already, we're done with that one. I know. <laughs> In case the applicant asks. Well, you know, Tim, he's always got to talk about all this stuff. He's retired. He's got plenty of time. Now. I got plenty of time now. Okay, so the next case is, let me find it here. Case number BZA 21-0030. You want to explain to us what's going yes. on? I forgot to swear in, so I'll do that now. Forgot to what? <laughs> swear in. <laughs> I, Naya Holt, affirm the testimony I'm about to give before the Board of Zoning Appeals is correct to the best of my knowledge. It's been a minute since we've done this. <laughs> right. This is an appeal of an administrative decision regarding a chain link fence in the front yard. Just a bit of background. So staff determined that the permit request for a 48 inch chain link fence in the front yard off of um, Broadmead and Lorella ooh, Avenue, excuse me, um, did not meet the current zoning regulations. There was a wire fence there, metal fence for many years, but staff found that a change in the metal types of fence did not constitute a claim of non-conforming rights. Um, the applicant did not receive formal approval from the city. We sent notice of our decision in November and pursuant to our zoning code, it is up to you to hear appeals. So this is the property outlined in blue in the R3. The fence is along here. There is this is the aerial map. There is existing chain link fence on this portion of property where the, oh, where the primary structure is. This is the front of the subject site and you can see the chain link fence I'm referring to that was on the primary structure side. Now this is the portion in question where the permit was denied. So this is what it looks like today. This is what it looked like in 2018. I'm not going to on the property. Okay. Hold on. That's from the previous case. What? He's from the property. Are you from the previous case? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Your case has already been heard. 
This? I'm Robert Bates. Yeah, we've already heard the police haven't shown up yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no, we, we've already heard your case. We've already disposed of your case, but we, we wanted you to be here to speak. I understand. Uh, we close that public hearing. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sir. It's closed. We denied the appeal because it's so close to the property line. You'll get. I'm sorry about that. You'll you'll get a you'll get a, um, a letter with the our exact findings. So, well, anyway, we we we're, we're well, sir. We can't hear anymore. I'm sorry. It's. Um, if you had called us, we could have probably flopped the the, set, the the two cases maybe for you, but you know, of course you don't know that. But no, all right, sorry. Where are we at? This is another current view of that okay. fence, and this is the view. Ooh, like a is there a fence in there? Yeah. In the, yeah, so here it is. It was the old farmer. Oh, uh, okay, I see it. All right. We'll get to you. So this is the adjacent property. Here another one. So you can see the type of fencing in the area. Catholic church in it. It is. So this is staff's analysis. Um, the applicant constructed a 48 inch chain link fence in the front yard, which is prohibited. Only um, three foot fences are permitted in the chain link and they have to be open. So chain link is not permitted. Solid board privacy fences are not permitted in the front yard either. Um, the applicant stated in their letter, which is also in your packet, that they replaced a chain link fence with the metal fence that was already there. The two fences were made of similar material, therefore, it grants the non-conforming rights and that the fence that is there um, improved the property. Some of the highlights of that letter. The non-conforming section of our code states that any portion of a structure that's changed or altered should not be just reconstructed. So there's two things, two conditions that need to be met in order to have non-conforming status. The first one is that the structure lawfully existed prior to the current zoning regulations. And the second is that the structure, excuse me, structure continued to exist without being altered or, or destroyed. So this ordinance that we currently have, our zoning code was updated in March of 2017. So we have Google images dating back to 2017. I know I showed you 18, but our, our information research shows that there was a fence there going back to 2007, which meets the first condition. However, the applicant removed the fence and erected a chain link fence, altering the fence, which does not meet the second condition. Therefore, we cannot establish non-conforming rights for this structure. And the current regulations passed in 2017 must comply. So staff finds that the newly constructed fence is not covered by our non-conforming structure standards. And we will need to have a three foot fence that is open or no fence at all in that area per our code. And staff does not find that the current fence is in compliance and we could not issue a permit because of those reasons. So these are your required actions based on our code the information in the case, any evidence or testimony presented here today to determine whether the applicant has met their burden of proof to sustain their appeal. And just to give you an understanding of what this means, if you grant the appeal, that means you have determined that the fence does have non-conforming rights, or if you're denying, that means it does not have non-conforming rights. Are there any questions for staff? Does our UDO specify that in that specific on the type of metal that's in a metal fence? 
It does not. But what you were saying was because the old fence was different than the chain link, that they're different enough that that was the distinction made yeah. by the code. Mm -hmm. Not that the code said this metal counts as this and this metal counts as that, right? Correct. Anyone else have any questions for the city? No. Okay. Well, I'll open the public portion at 725. Is there any who would like to speak in favor of the application? Now, what's your name? My name is Richard Spurlock. Oh, you I did fill this out. Okay. Yeah. I affirm that the testimony that I am about to give before the Board of Zoning Appeals is correct to the best of my knowledge. Okay. Okay, I want to start off by saying is what you don't clearly see in the photos is there was some portions of chain link fence there. There was some chain link posts. It was just constructed all the way around. Okay. And on the other side of that gate, there was also a chain link fence. It wasn't the metal farm fence. It was right on the other side, which on the other side of that driveway that was poured there was an actual chain link fence that we did. <clears throat> and I do kind of want to bring up on some some prior cases uh, with the city of Riverside, you know, that with the chain link fence being there, metal fence being there, you know, that we're not technically, you know, reconstructing anything. We're just trying to put something there. We're avoiding an eyesore, right? You know, we're, you know, we tore down all that brush, all that old fence, put up something much more. Are you talking what you've done, not what other, you said previous cases. Well, not... previous cases that that was passed like uh, Rondoa, Rondo Avenue, I believe it was. I could be slightly, slightly, slightly misconstrued on this. Well, I'll tell you what, just what we want to hear from you is just what you have to say about your property. Okay, I do. Okay. So, you know, so there was portions of chain link there, you know, so, you know, you know, kind of in my determination of, you know, what I understand with it is, you know, we can reconstruct another chain link fence, you know, because in there, in that embedded area where there was portions of farm fence, there was portions of chain link fence. Chain link post, you know, the round post. Can you get closer there. to that, Mike? Because you're can you hear me a little better now? Uh, well, yeah. There we go. Okay. So there was portions of chain link, you know. So we didn't just tear down an old farm fence and put up chain link, you know. So there was just kind of mixed. You couldn't really see in the photos that you guys have of you know prior. I think Mr. Morgan has some photos. I don't know if it totally touches, you know, because you know, anybody that goes to go through a you know, fence application and somebody says, Hey, you know, you know, we can go ahead and approve that, you know, verbally. You know, I'm not sure the whole entitlements of the permit. I was not in charge of the permit of this job. I was in charge of the construction of the job. Again, my name is Richard Spurlock. I run Imagination Creations Construction. It's a commercial and residential remodeling company. Uh, Mr. Morgan here is a friend and a, and a family member. You know, he, he run this by me, uh, you know, a couple of times. And, you know, I said, because like I said, they're just prior, prior engagements that I, that I know of people that's had and, you know, of things that's going on, you know. You know, I, I went with, you know, my judgment. I'm like, hey, you know, since there is fence there, I don't think that I don't think there would be a problem. You know, I mean, we've seen the we've seen the photos, you know, of how much better the property looks, you know, and I understand that, you know, there is there is the rule there in Riverside with a three foot fence. OK, I'm, I'm sure everyone here knows, you know, the, the crime rate in the area is not very low, you know, so. You know, what you're actually protecting out of your front yard with a three foot fence, I have no idea. Somebody's going to step over it. Somebody could step over it with a heavy object that they're stealing out of your shed or your garage. So, you know, they're, the, the purpose of the three foot fence wouldn't be for anything. You know, uh, I mean, I'm sure, you know, a, a small 20 pound, you know, doll can put a three foot fence, you know, so we're not, we're not protecting anything. You know, we're not protecting anybody's well being from some of the stray dogs, the stray pit bulls and, you know, stray large dogs that run around in the yards and, and, and do what they want in the area, you know? So, you know, I, I think, you know, I think that, you know, the board really re reconsiders, you know, their, their decision here, the staff's, you know, as you know, quoted the staff's decision on, on, on the fence, because, you know, I think, you know, somebody, you know, like Mr. Morgan, who I've known for a very long time, you know, very, very productive member of society. I think that he, he owns the right as as a citizen of Riverside to be able to protect his goods and his property because who does that who does it fall back on you know it falls back on him he's got to replace his all his property you know that could potentially be stolen you know when his grandkids are out playing in the yard in that side yard which you know they do very often you know they they deserve to be protected from stray dogs and 
you know, uh, other things, you know, as well. It's a very, it's a very good looking fence. You know, I, I built it myself, you know, so I, I do think it looks good, you know, and, and I, I think it serves its purpose. What is its purpose? To keep things out of his yard, to keep, you know, to keep thieves from stepping over his three foot fence in his yard and, you know, going and having, having their way in his garage or his shed or anything like that. You know, I think it's more of a deterrent for a larger dog, you know, to not jump over a three foot fence, which, you know, I, I didn't bring a tape over with me, but it's only out there, you know, and, you know, it's something, you know, that I, that, you know, I, I myself personally, you know, I request the board to really look at this case and, you know, really look at what they're, you know, look at what purpose it would be, you know, to ask someone to destruct, to, you know, deconstruct, you know, something that's not hurting anyone or it's not causing an eyesore or it's not downgrading any type of property, right? Well, I don't I affirm that, so go ahead. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll let Mr. Morgan speak and if I have anything to add or, or touch on what he does, if, if I can, you know, swear in again and, and do let that. Let me ask you a question. What, who is the owner? <laughs> of the a, property? Yeah. Mr. Morgan. Okay, so what's your position with the property? No, 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 not you. I'm My position to of the property. What's your what's your position? I'm I'm the contractor that built the fence. So you're the contractor. I am the contractor that built the fence. And I'm a family friend of Mr. <clears throat> Morgan's. Okay. All right. So you're the contractor. Great. Let me ask you a question. You do you do this a lot? Contracted this kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I do. You understand do the value, the value or the importance of a permit? Yeah. Why didn't you get one? I, I was under the impression that Mr. Morgan had discussed because he did call down here and he did. I, I, I was under the impression that he had actually filed the permit, but I'm uh, maybe in the notes there was no actual permit filed. Maybe is that what I seen? Or so a, a permit, a permit was submitted and we needed to revise site plan because it wasn't clear from the site plan which portion of the property the new fence was going. Okay, so he could have very easily thought that his permit okay. was accepted and you, or that he filed the permit and, accept, and it was accepted. Are, are you familiar with variances? What yes. that means? Yes. yes. Very familiar. Huh? Very, yes. Okay, so if you got a three-foot fence, you didn't have a variance for a four-foot fence. Yeah, but there's also a grandfather clause that you can put it no, back. No, this doesn't qualify. That you can take that, it, this that, doesn't that you qualify, can take it we'll down get, and put it back, right? We'll get that in a minute. Okay. But this doesn't qualify for grandfather. But um, so you understand the variance. Okay, so I'm good. Anybody else have any questions for? I, I was just going to ask, do, do you know or how tall was the old fence? That was it, was, it was a little, it was like 50 inches. Okay. It, was, it was an older farm fence. It was right at 50 or 52 inches. Okay. It was not a standard height. I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure. That's fine. I don't, I'm not sure if they even make it anymore. Do you know what percentage of that fence came down? You changed, took down? Did you take the fence down, the old fence? I, I helped. I assisted take the fence down, yes. And so how much of the, what percentage of the old fence was taken down? All of it. All of it was taken down? All of it except for the corner post. Okay, so where all of it was fence, taken where down. Where the actual fence started and it ended, we left corner post, sleeved them, and then we went around in the same property line. Okay. Exactly. And how was. long was the fence down? I'm, you know, I, I don't know. My, I, I do not recall. Okay, because we, we're some of the evidence we have is like over four months, but it could have been over years, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? No, I, I don't think years, no. But it could have been over a year or so, possibly? No, I don't think so. Do you know? I don't have a clue. Okay. We can find out, but what the only thing we have right now, because I... I asked this question today and we came up with at least four months, but anyway. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? No. So thank you, Mr. Spurlock. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Now, uh, then we've got, does anyone else like to speak in favor of the application? Now, uh, you didn't fill out one of these forms. I, yeah, I didn't. I filled you out. Oh, you're Ira. Ira. Ira Morgan. Okay. All right. Um, you swear in? I can't say much more. Swear in. Pardon me? You have to swear in. Ira Morgan. No, take the oath. It's right in front of you. Oh, okay. I state, <laughs> I, I, Ira Morgan, affirm that I, the testimony I'm about to give before the Board of Zoning Appeals is correct to the best of my knowledge. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I can't say much more than he has. We had um, 
We had, a, we had some chain link fence up there that we replaced. We had the farmer's fence up there, been for several years, wire fence. And uh, I do have some pictures here I'd like to show to you. Um, to show you what the property line looked like prior to us cleaning it all up. We said some time that that fence was down. Some time that fence was down because it probably had taken us, without exaggerating, four months to clean the property line up the fence. It had trees glow growed. The lady had uh, her house had burned up there. And I've been mowing the grass because it got so high. You folks uh, left tickets on her fence uh, because the grass had got so high. So I just started mowing it um, because it was close to mine. And as you can imagine what it looked like prior to me mowing it. So I went ahead and done the best I could getting her grass down. If we look at the fence line there, that's what it looked like prior to me taking chain link fence down and the farmer's fence down that had been there for several years. If you come and looked at it now, or if you get, I got pictures of it now, it's it's amazing. I, I think I have one of the, one of the, there's several, but one of the cleanest properties in that part of town. And um, if you left my house, went up any street there is, I promise you, you got a lot more issues and problems than one fence that's 12 inches higher than you would expect. Right. And I would appreciate and be very thankful if you just look at what we've done, look at where we're at today and try to look at us and say, we can improve this because we've made our area, not only my area, my home, but the church across the street, you mentioned that about their fence. I help them. I help them every summer to mow their lawns, keep do everything I can for them. The neighbors next door, there's two neighbors down, but never gets out of his house to mow his grass. I still help them. I do everything in the world. I donated a trailer to Stebbins High School for no money, hauled it around town for him for a whole season. We do everything in the world for this, for Mad River Township, Montgomery County here. And we just would appreciate. Um, we're not asking for nothing special. We had a, we had a fence there prior um, to taking that one down. We did file for a permit and probably after, I'm gonna guess three to four weeks, um, that's when we you ask about how long was that fence down. Three or four weeks after we filed for the first permit, we had taken and tried to clean it up. It looked terrible, and it did look terrible. If you look at that, you, you can't even see parts of the fence or get inside the lot. And it did have a chain link gate and a fence, as the other gentleman uh, told you, on the backside. We had parts of chain link fence all the way throughout the fence. And um, we just would appreciate and be very thankful if you look at that situation and how much better it looks today. And you, any one of you could take a picture of it today. And it probably looks as good as anybody's house in here or property in here, I should say. And I'd be very thankful if we could look at that and, and okay our situation. You, you said something about parts. You took parts to the fence there? There was, if you look at the back corner, I, I give you, I think I give you a picture there with two chain link gates. And there was a chain link gate. There was not chain. There was chain link fence connected onto that. That we we set up there for a while, wired it together so nobody could get in the back of the lots because we were working over there each and every day. And as the other gentleman told you, you could set a, a rake out there in the yard. You could set a shovel out there in the yard. Next day it'd be gone, and it will be gone. That's the neighborhood we live in. It's a shame, but that's the neighborhood we live in. I want to say thank God to the Riverside Police Department because they do, and they do like us. They do park right beside our, up toward our property there and watch over the area for us quite often. As a matter of fact, two of them, we had a little incident um, probably three months ago. Two of them came up. We took them up in the garage, showed them what we had in the garage, showed them around the property. Very nice to us very respectful to us and I hope and I know we was the same to them. So we do look out for each and everything around us, each and every one around us, and we just would appreciate a uh, little leniency here. And we'd be very thankful for that. Okay. But you did take the fence down. It was down for a period of time. It was down 
Let me think now. I want no, to be, don't, be aware now. We can we can see this. We can no, you're back. all right. I'm not going. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not okay. going to right. misinform you. I'm going to give you the best answer I can. And whenever I took and I filed for the per first permit that I brought over here and paid, I think it was twenty five dollars. If I'm not mistaken. At that point in time, after we filed for that permit, we took it down. We took the fence down that the farmer's fence, so to speak. The first part of the fence, we took down sometime before that because we had trees in there seven foot around. It cost me a lot of money to get tree stumps out of that fence line. It cost me money to get a tree stump out that was the city of Riverside's. That was this, this tree road right beside the fire hydrant. It was lifting the fire hydrant up. I come over here and reported it. That you guys sent me a notice said you're going to be fined a hundred dollars if you don't get it out in 30 days. It was outside my fence on the corner under the fire extinguisher. It was raising the fire extinguisher up. But I took it out. It cost me a thousand dollars. I took it out, paid for it and everything. But well, that's and, not an issue for us. We don't deal with that sort of thing. Okay. So. Well I'm just saying for the city of Riverside that that's, I mean, that's why I am. I want things to be right. I want things to be good. I want things to be nice and neat. If you came by and looked at my property, it's clean. It's clean. It's taken care of. And in the summer, I mow it twice a week. I keep it nice and neat. And I'd be very thankful. Again, I've said this to half a dozen times, but I'm going to say it again. Please be flexible. Please be lenient. If you could take a look, you would understand where I'm coming from. I have one of the cleanest properties in that area. Why they would, I mean, if you come and looked at it, you would go around that town and say, how can we say anything to this gentleman for what we see in this area? And I think you guys all are aware of that. You're aware of that. So I know that it looks like we maybe broken a rule, but I don't really think we did because we had fence all the way around the property that was somewhat chain link, somewhat wire fence, the old farmer's fence. And when, again, when I came over and filed for the first permit, I took a bobcat, I had a bobcat and I took the fence out, cleaned it all up. It's clean, it's clean. It's one of the cleanest properties out there. So please think about it. Please make a good decision on our half. We appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. So what, what, do, you, uh, what do you do in the yard? Like, why do you want a fence? What I do in it, I keep it protected. You don't live in Riverside, do you? I have to. <laughs> to you be. live in Riverside? <laughs> yeah, we all Do you live some. out there where I live out there? In no, I live in an apartment. <laughs> okay. Out there in our area? Yeah, I'm just, I'm a, just asking, like, what, what is the use of the yard? I have a garage Why do you there. have a fence? I have a garage there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that I have a couple cars in. Okay. I have a lot of, I have some tools. And I promise you, by my house every day, six drug addicts walk by there. Mm -hmm. They buy it right around the corner from me. And they walk by. If I don't have a fence there, or something, I got cameras all the way around. You may ask why you have cameras there. Well, sure. why you, you see why, you understand yeah. why, I'm telling you why. I know. A fence will slow them down, camera, we may be able to catch them. And, and I promise you, every day, six of them drug addicts walk by my house. They buy it right around the corner from me, right around the corner. Why do I live in the area? Why do I live there? Why do I do that? Because that's where my mother lived. We bought that house in... 1973, and uh, we've lived there all of our life. The lady next door, the, the property that we're talking about, whenever she got ready to sell it, she came to me first and she said, you've been mowing grass here for two or three years. She said, I want to give you the first opportunity to, to buy this property. And that's when we bought it. We started cleaning it up. If you, it probably took over a period of time, probably, probably took me a year and a half, two years to clean the property up all the trees. We was there all summer. Just, I had people come in and, and cut the logs up. It was, it was the craziest amount of trees you've ever seen. It was unbelievable. And I paid a lot of people money to do all that. And um, if you, if you, you live there close, drive by there. I would, I would welcome, I'd love for one of these guys to drive by, see our property. It's clean. It's nice, neat. I mo you asked me about the, the fence. I mow the grass twice a week, keep it nice and clean. Um, I do everything you're supposed to do, except for getting this permit. And I did file for it, but after four weeks, three or four weeks, we went ahead and knocked the rest of the fence down and, um, and we tried to clean it up. It, it did look terrible, 
you see the pictures of it. It looked terrible. It looked terrible. And so enough said. I would be very thankful if you'd make a good decision on our behalf and and uh, and I, I would appreciate it and thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor of the application? You want to swear in for us up there? I can't There's hear you. one on the podium. You, you come oh, up. Oh, that's here. all right. Don't worry about it. Katie can spell. I usually have people spell it. Can you fill out afterwards? Just pick one up. Oh, okay. Um, What's your name? My name is Cindy Morgan. Okay. And I am affirming the testimony I'm about to give is true to my best knowledge for the boarding zone. No, ma'am, you're, you're really low. Pull that thing down. It bends. There okay. you go. Get in there and talk. Is that, is that better? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, for the appeals to be corrected to the best of my knowledge. The only thing I really want to say is um, my husband works hard. We was raised in Riverside. We love it. We try to do all we can. He had, his dream was to build a garage and have cars, and he did. Um, after 50 years, and my nagging a little bit, but he... he he's trying to protect what he has to work so hard for. And that is the purpose for the garage. And that is the purpose for the fence. We don't live in a great neighborhood. We love it though, because this is our neighborhood. This is our family. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Anybody have any questions? No. Thank you, man. Thanks. And I need to fill this out. Do I need to turn this back in? I think you're good. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else here would like to speak in favor of the application? Anyone here would like to speak in opposition to the application? Okay. At uh, 7.47, we'll close the public portion. Uh, can you pull up so we have it on screen so we make sure that which one we're going for or against? This case? No, which? Remember last time we get confused on saying yes meant no and no meant yes. You know, I got that wrote right here. From the <laughs> law director That's what I said to make sure <laughs> on what what you're saying yes or no to. Yeah. Uh, if I make a motion that's negative, we have to and you guys overwhelm me, then we have to make it positive and do it again. Right. That's the main thing. Yeah, because okay. I think we're, we're looking at granting or denying the appeal. Right. Right. Yeah, this is strictly an, an appeal that. And, and I think, from what I understand, almost the whole thing hinges on whether this is grandfathered or not. Yeah, like whether it counts and, as a non-conforming. And grandfathered is a layman's term for non-conforming property. So, um, it's in my view, it's non-conforming. It hasn't been beaten. There was no appeal. There was no permit made. It made it too big, which requires a variance. Um, uh, they just kind of ignored the state. They, they ignored the notices they got on November 4th. And they just built the fence anyway. When all of this could have been solved if it was just been, you know, if the variance had been requested. Because even if you win the appeal, you still have all these variances to come back for, for size and all that. So, this could have all been headed off if the just rules and the procedure had been followed to start with. <clears throat> so, in my opinion, they haven't overridden the fact that this is not should not be grandfathered because it was. It, there's certain specifics that I'll read out loud that have been up here already. That's my position. So, anybody else want to? On the other hand, of course. <laughs> I think we've already heard from the city that a metal fence, it doesn't go into specifics, right? I can pull up that section of code if you like. Well, <laughs> I think it's well within the bounds that, yeah. okay, metal fence was there, metal fence was put up. That's but the metal fence was removed, which takes it out of nonconforming because there's certain specific rules that apply mm -hmm. to that. 
Okay. And we have to apply the rules as they stand, whether we like it or not. That's okay. It, it, it wasn't up. Never mind. No. It's done. Yeah, so I, I don't see how this isn't non-conforming. I mean, I mean, they pulled down. I mean, yeah, they had to put the, the, the fence back, you know, up where they took it. You got to take the fence down to put the old one, to put the improved one up. But, I mean, it's it's roughly the same size, right? The guy said 50-ish inches, something like that. They put up a four-foot fence in the same spot of, of the same material in parts and almost the same material in the rest of the part. I, I can't see any way that this wouldn't be uh, count as the non-conforming. If it was down, if it, period, if it was mean, down. That's how that's how they were fixing it, though. How was no. she supposed to fix it? And they according did to the and, city, it was down longer than that. Yeah, but it was down in parts, and they said that also. How long does the city say you it was part down? Part of it down. You replace our code it. enforcement officer said it was a, about four months. He said what he observed. Do you know what the bookends of those? Were? What was the start? It was down, and then when I don't were, know. You don't. I know? wouldn't. Okay. Not those Okay. I, I, I don't see how this could be anything but counting as not. Well, I know. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. From these two. <laughs> Where are you at, JR? I agree. With who? Them? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm going to read the whole thing I've got constructed here and then we'll. We'll make the motion to the affirmative. All right. Our findings are we find that the property had many years, uh, had for many years a wire farm fence in place where the new fence now has been erected without a permit. Our findings are that the, the applicant has two front yards. A 48 inch chain link fence with, are not permitted in the front yard. On October 21, of 2021, a letter from the city stated regulations that apply and requested a revised site plan, which shows the placement of the proposed fence. On November 4th, uh, a notice was sent denying the permit due to incomplete application. So see that right there is what gets me because you know if you if you want this property, you have to comply with the law, you have to follow notices. The city, we're paying them a lot of money to send notices out. And you guys ignore that. But anyway. Well, the so, question wasn't about whether he correctly filled out the that That's okay. Form. That's okay. Staff observed that the work had been completed without a valid permit uh, for approval. The application submitted was incomplete. And requested provisions were not submitted to staff within the required uh, time frame. The fence was, which was erected, uh, enlarged and non-conforming structure and was constructed prior to receiving approval. On November 4th, 2021, the city sent notice to remove the non-compliant fence. Uh, section 1103.13.1, we find that they, where a lawful structure exists at an effective date of adoption or, or amendment of this ordinance that could not be built under the terms of this ordinance by reason of restrictions on area, lot coverage, height, et cetera, such structure may be continued so as long as it remains otherwise lawful, subject to the following conditions. No such conforming structure may be enlarged or altered in a way which increases the nonconformity, which it does because it's 48 inches. But anyway. Well, the should, old one was taller. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anyway. Well, anyway, should around. such nonconforming structure or nonconforming portion uh, of a structure be destroyed by any means to the extent of more than 50% of the cost of replacement at the time of the, so we're talking not size, we're talking about 50% of replacement. And I think everyone would agree that that fence is definitely more than 50%. It shall be reconstructed. Uh, it shall not be reconstructed except in conformity with this ordinance, which did not happen. We find that the code was passed on March 2017 Google images dating back to 2007 clearly show the existence of the wire farm fence. The first condition has been met since wire farm fence existed during the current regulations. We find that the condition two has not been met. I have found that condition two has not been met. 
1303.13.1 states, should such conform, non-conforming structure or non-conforming portion of a structure be destroyed by any means, no talk about time, to the extent of more than 50% of the cost of the replacement. So it fails for that reason. At the time of destruction, it shall not be reconstructed except in conformity with the provision of this ordinance. Therefore, we find that the property has been altered to the extent in which it must comply with the current standards. I make a motion the city staff interpretation is incorrect and shall not be upheld. That's a positive, it's best I can do it. So that we would grant the appeal is the motion. Yeah. Second. Roll call. Mr. Childers? No. Mr. Timbrook? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Now, That's now pass. Yeah. It passed. It passed. You're okay. Okay. So you you've got you've got you beat the appeal. Now you have you've got a lot of work yet left to do. Okay. You got variances that you didn't comply with. You got to get all those done. I'm not sure, but you know, they, since they said it's non-conforming, all I have to do is reapply for the permit. So all I got to do is what? All I have to do is reapply for the permit. Well, there you go. Just file for a permit. You got what you want. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yes. You guys are we closed? <laughs> no, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we have our new city manager. I don't know if all of you had a chance to meet Joshua Roush, but he wanted to attend tonight. So, um, Mr. Manager, if you have anything you'd like to say, some remarks, and and we may have some questions as well. So, no, I, thanks everybody. I I just appreciate the opportunity to sit in. I did want to make an effort to to come to this meeting. I had intended to come much earlier than four months into the job, but uh, unfortunately, every time the BZA has met, I've been double booked, um, but was happy to be here tonight. So also happy to, to get to know each of you individually. I know we've got um, uh, one that's out, but um, happy to learn a little bit more just about your backgrounds with the city as I'm, again, kind of in the beginning months of this job, trying to make a point to meet as many folks as I can, learn a little bit more about um, your experience uh, with the BZA and, and Riverside and I'll be as helpful as I can going forward. So definitely appreciate your time. Okay. Yes, I have some quick announcements before we go. All right. uh, do you want this on a record or off? Well, this, this is, is still part of the record. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, very quickly, as um, Tim knows, we're working on our land use plan update. There is a community survey out there. So if you haven't already, please complete that. There's a simple like eight question survey. Part of that is basically, you know, your zip code. No, it's a separate, it's a separate group that's meeting. Oh, yeah. Completely separate. He's special. But I mean, it's not, it's not for us. We don't go hang out. He's well, I'm asking you to. Oh, you're As a resident of Riverside, oh, okay. we want your input. <laughs> we we want to, to know <laughs> what you see for the future of Riverside. So I okay. will email this to you, but I wanted to share it to people watching at home. They would also have the links, you know, take a screenshot. There's, we have information we're putting on our website on the second one for any community meetings, but share it with your family, friends, neighbors, let them know about the survey, please. The second thing is I sent out an email about training opportunities. I'll be doing that periodically. Um, I know, you know, council gave you a little, resolution about that. The very first one is targeted for boards and board members and commissioners. So that is the one I really want you to focus on. The other ones are just great to know, uh, especially as we're heading into this land use planning. I have a comment. I did watch the first, well, the yeah. first two, but the first one, mm -hmm. well, both of them, we're actually doing a lot of the things that they're talking about yes. here already. 
which is actually a great thing. It's a great thing. And I, especially when it comes to uh, ethics and things like that, where we try to think independently and come to uh, conclusions on things. Uh, but uh, just want to put that plug in because I think we're doing a, a really good, we can always improve obviously, but we're, we're doing a lot of those things. Yeah. Thank you. And the other one is just really great tools for, you know, kind of place making. I watched the third one myself this past week. And then we have a form that, you know, you can log your hours and we can help you get, you know, the eight you need in the next few years. So that's really all I have. Just a few housekeeping things. Cool. I had a question. Yes. Sure. Okay. If people, and it's because of our first case tonight, um, on the form or when uh, an individual is notified that there's going to be a BZA meeting to where they need to be here on time. But if they're unable to, is there a phone number or how do they get in contact here to say, hey, I'm running 10, 20 minutes, like whatever, so that they can notify us immediately so we can do a, an on the fly shuffle of cases maybe. Um, I usually have my phone connected. My Even if I'm walking around, my cell phone is connected to my desk phone so I could get it. I'd have my email there. Um, I didn't get an email from Mr. Hayes. Okay, but did they know that they could? That was an option that they, they could they could number, contact your number. They do know my number, but I didn't say, "Hey, if you're running late, let me know." I'll maybe I don't know that you want to say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe maybe for the future, um, because a, a lesson learned, um, and, and because you know we are here to take care of citizens, and uh, yeah, but if if they don't reply yeah. and say, "Hey, hey, I'm." 10, 15 minutes late and give you a call maybe or some way to contact you in here to where it would pop up. Uh, I'm just thinking of options uh, because I can understand the frustration of somebody saying, oh my gosh, I'm trying to get there and I can't get there on time. I mean, if they just don't show up and they, we don't see them the whole night. Okay, I don't have any sympathy for that. Right. There's, there's, no, there's no legal legality that it has to be in order, is there? No, if you guys motion to move it, it can happen. Okay. But I mean, if, the, if, if there's a notification number or some way to notify while we're in session to say, hey, I'm late. Can you? It's just a slippery slope. That, you're right. I know it is. That opens the door. Because mm -hmm. people are going to use that as their excuse. Absolutely. So when I tried and tried, I tried, I tried, I tried to call, couldn't get through. So you said, no, can we do my case again next month? Then we have to hear more appeals. And yeah, those are the worst. So. The only comment I'd say is it happens very infrequently. It's unfortunate on That's this kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not very, it's not very frequent, Dan. I, I agree with you. And I, I mean, saying, I, I respect no, that, I but at saying. the same time, say, yeah. hey, if, you know, if you don't let us know within 15, 15 minutes, you're not going to be there, then I you're I mean, on your I own. Send, I send a reminder email about a week ahead of time. Mm -hmm. That's been a practice that I've gotten into. You're very good about notifying people. Oh. And, and, and yeah, make, well, citizens should appreciate that. Make it that big. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, with his work is what he said. That's right. Use me as your guinea pig, no? your, your test. I can read it. I'm, I'm sure it's something that staff will, will kick around, but this, like you said, is in frequency, just an unfortunate situation. Mm -hmm. Sucks. Just thinking aloud. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, that's all I have. I move that we close. <laughs>